and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new die set, Magic Iris Beehive Add-on. This beehive add-on is a perfect addition to the Magic Iris, helping you make really cool interactive cards. The other great thing is that you can use the Magic Iris Beehive add-on on its own too, and we're gonna be showing you both ways to do that in this video. We are also going to be introducing our brand new stamp set, More Magic Messages and its coordinating dies. This is the latest in our Magic Messages series and these might be my favorite yet. So let's go ahead and check all of these products out. First, we're gonna take a look at the Magic Iris Beehive add-on, which of course comes with a beehive, which also cuts a center circle that you can use on the inside of this Magic Iris add-on. It has this really cool branch to hang your beehive from, some leaves and flowers and little centers for the flowers, some little hexagons that you can add to decorate, and the cutest little bee ever. I am in love with this little guy so much. You can use the leaves behind the flowers, but you can also use them at the end of the branches, and I think this is just such a cute look. I love the look of the little yellow centers in the flowers. They have these really cute little pierced dots that add the perfect detail. And then to put the bee together, all you need to do is add some liquid glue on the back and then you can put the backing piece there and then that will help fill in your bee. And then you can add the little wings, which I love adding with pearlescent vellum because they look so beautiful. And now you have just the cutest little bee ever. Then those hexagons are really fun for adding to your beehive for texture or for decorating the backs of your cards. And then of course you can layer everything all together. So you can put the branch on top and then layer the bee and the flowers around your cute scene. Next, we wanted to give you a look of what the beehive looks like on a magic iris. So here we have a pre-built magic iris. We'll be building one in just a little bit. And all you need to do is take that beehive and it's gonna perfectly line up over the magic iris window. Then you can add your cute decorations like that little branch and the flowers and the bee. And you can have either a fun message or a fun scene inside that cute little beehive entrance. Oh, I love this so much. And speaking of messages, we're gonna take a look at the More Magic Messages stamp set. So here we have some really cute phrases. We have just a little note, sending rainbows and sunshine, my personal favorite. Miss you lots, get well soon. We also have a dream big and you are so amazing. This set also has all of these cute little extra icons. So we're gonna stamp those out now. So here we have a cute little sun and I love layering these around the messages or around my cards. So there's a sun, a heart, a little flower with some little leaves behind it, a tiny little paper airplane, a trio of hearts, a little moon and stars combo, and then the cutest tiny little cloud. Oh, I love it so much. And then a little tiny flower with some leaves as well. So now that we've stamped out all of our more magic messages, we're gonna go ahead and add some color using Copic markers. These images are super fun to color in. I just love doing them so much, but they're also really great heat embossed. So you could use white heat embossing powder, or rose gold, silver, etc. You can have a lot of fun with that way too. They're also really great stamped in different colors of ink. I love that they're a perfect match for the Magic Iris and any of the Magic Iris add-ons, but the other really great thing is that you can use them on their own too, and we're gonna be showing you that a little bit later on in the video. They're just perfect little sentiments that are great for cards and little quick mini cards and tags too. When I'm deciding on colors for these images, I like to match it towards my pattern paper or maybe use the recipient's favorite colors. I thought this orange and yellow felt really sunshiny, which would be really nice to send along with a miss you lots type of card. For this get well soon, I'm using some green for the leaves and then I'm gonna color the flowers like they're little daisies. So I'll add some yellow centers and make the little mini flowers yellow. And then I'll use a warm gray marker to make that white pop on the cute little daisies. For the Dream Big, I'm gonna use some really soft blues and purples. I just think it feels so magical mixed around with the gray moon and the yellow stars. And then this You Are So Amazing is one of my favorites too. I think it's so pretty and I love coloring in all of the little leaves green and then using a nice bright bold color on the letters. I like to use a darker color towards the bottom and then blend it out with a lighter color towards the top so it has a bit of like a gradient ombre effect on it. And then I can use that pink to color in all of the cute little circles all around the leaves and I think this is just so fun and bright and happy. And then to color in all of these little mini images, I'm gonna use the markers that are on my desk from coloring in all of these images and use those there to color these in so that everything's gonna match and coordinate together. 
To make the white pop on the plane and the daisy, I'll use some warm grays and I'll use some light blues for the cloud to make that just look beautiful and like it's perfect for the sky. These are the coordinating dies, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're going to line up those coordinating dies with our stamped and colored images, run it through the die cut machine, and we'll have perfectly cut out images every time. And then here is a look at all of the images from the set. And what I love about that little stitch circle is that it cuts it the perfect size to fit in any Magic Iris card or Magic Iris add-on card, any of the designs that we've done. But it also just cuts the cutest little circle that's the perfect sentiment to add to the front of your platform pop-up or onto a little mini card or a tag. So I love that that circle has lots and lots of different uses. Now it's time to start creating with all of these products. So we are gonna start off by creating a Magic Iris Beehive card without the Magic Iris. And we're gonna be starting with the largest of the small stitch rectangles, and we're gonna be die cutting this really cute stripes and sprinkles paper. It's just the perfect background with those cute little dots. Then before we start adding things to this card, I'm gonna get my stamping done. I always forget to do this part at the beginning and I was really proud of myself for remembering. And we're gonna be using the Hive 5 stamp set and we're gonna be using from the whole hive and just stamping that there at the bottom. Then we're gonna take out that Magic Iris Beehive die and we're gonna start die cutting some different things here. So we're gonna die cut that beehive out of some sunflower cardstock, which is a perfect color for this beehive. And you'll see that it cuts the beehive and that center circle that's gonna be the perfect size for the More Magic Messages stamp set. And in this case, I decided to use the Just a Little Note. I kind of went through all of mine seeing what would be cute for this beehive, and I think Just a Little Note is perfect. So we're going to stamp that in some black licorice ink right onto that circle that the Magic Iris Beehive die created for us. Next, we're gonna die cut some of the elements that are included in the Magic Iris Beehive. So we have that cute branch and leaves, flowers, etc. So we're gonna be die cutting all of that. So we've got our branch there out of some chocolate bar cardstock. We have some awesome cute little leaves out of cilantro, a guava flower with a little sticky note center. <laughs> Those are all the different colors of cardstock. Then we're gonna add some foam squares to the back of the beehive. And I'm just gonna use this branch here as a guide as to where to put the beehive first. Then I'm gonna add the branch after. So once I had that branch there, I kind of saw the perfect place for my beehive. I line that up and I can press that down and then start to work on the rest of my design. So for the branch, we're also going to add some foam squares at the bottom and then some tape runner where it's gonna overlap with the beehive. That way it looks like the beehive is hanging from the branch. The next step is to add some little foam squares to the back of the leaves. And so I like to take my scissors and just trim my foam squares into little strips and that makes them the perfect size to add behind tiny little die cuts like this. Then we can layer these cute little leaves onto all of the different points of the branch. And I think that just looks so sweet and kind of helps build the whole scene. And the pop of green is so pretty too. Next, we can add the center to the flower, and then we're gonna layer that flower with the leaf that we put on the branch that's kind of overlapping the beehive. And I think this is really cute. Once again, it adds a little pop of color, and I like the look of that little leaf kind of extending out from that flower. Next, we're gonna take the circle that we stamped the More Magic Messages on. We'll add some adhesive behind that. And in this case, we're just gonna do some flat adhesive because I wanna feel like it's kind of like the back of the beehive. I like that dimension. And then we can layer that just a little note right in there. Now here we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're gonna take a piece of Peacock cardstock and layer that over the card base. And then we'll be able to layer our whole little beehive scene on top of that. And I really like the look of the kind of like darker turquoise or teal piece of cardstock with the lighter turquoise over top. I think it's really pretty. And honestly, this card could be done just like this, but since the high five stamp set is finally coming back and we're so excited about it, I had to grab some of these cute little bees because these little bees are perfect for this magic iris beehive. So I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut some of the bees and little trails that are in the high five stamp set and we're going to be layering these onto the hive so there you can see that cute little bee right there they're just the perfect size for the beehive I think it's just so sweet we're going to add this other little one to the top and then I thought it would be fun to do something kind of clever here we're going to take the bee and we're actually going to cover up the paper airplane that's in the just a little note and that way it's gonna look like the bee is flying off of the sentiment. I think this is so cute and such a fun way to kind of customize that little magic message. So see, we're gonna cover up the paper airplane in this case, and now there's a little bee using that trail, and I just think that is just too sweet. 
And now this card is all done. And one thing that I love about this card is it was very quick and easy to make. The bees are easy to color. All the die cutting was simple. And so you can see how quick it is to have multiple of these. And with that just a little note sentiment, it could go for just about any occasion. So this is such a fun set. And of course you could stamp all the other magic messages from any of the sets into that same design. Next, we're going to create an actual interactive magic iris with the beehive. But first, I thought it would be fun to add some detail to the magic iris. Of course, it looks great cut out of plain color cardstock, but it's really fun to add detail with markers or with ink blending. And in this case, I thought it would be fun to use markers. So I'm using a darker yellow and a lighter yellow. I'm doing a line of the dark across the stitching, and then I just blend it out with the lighter one just a little bit into the rest of the beehive. And you'll see how this whole thing just kind of makes it pop, and it's actually really, really quick and easy to do. I I think it looks so great. And so next we're going to be adding some of that other marker detail to creating this cute little bee. Earlier in the video we created a black bee with yellow stripes. This time we're going to use a yellow bee with black stripes. And so to make his antennas black I'm just going to use a black marker and color them in. And that's really really quick and easy to do. And it's a way to get two different looks out of this cute little bee. So there we're just going to color in all of the antennas of these little guys. And then I'm going to end up using the yellow markers, the same exact ones as we did for the hive, to add some details to the bee as well so that it all kind of looks coordinated together. So I'm adding my darker marker along the outside and just kind of on the stripes. And then I just blend it out with my light marker. Just kind of messy is actually what makes it look really great. And I'll do the same thing for all of these little flower centers too. And then I'll take a light pink marker and give them some rosy cheeks because, oh my goodness, it's just too cute. How could I help myself, right? <laughs> I went ahead and die cut a bunch of the other elements from the Magic Iris Beehive. And I'm going to start here with these cute little white daisies here. And we're going to add those yellow centers that we added just a little bit of marker to onto the center of each of these daisies. Then next we're going to start working on building our bees. So we'll add some liquid glue to the back of the bee and then we can take that little piece there, that's the one that's going to fill in the bee, and we're going to use some black licorice cardstock for that. So once again, earlier we built a black licorice bee and now we're building a yellow bee. So you can kind of play around with them and see what kind of look that you want for your card. I just kind of mix and match them depending. And then for the wings, I love using pearlescent vellum. They look so pretty and magical. So I'll add a drop of glue in the center of the wing and then I can just layer my little bee on top. And oh my goodness, oh, I love making these bees. I think I can make these bees all day. I just think they're so cute and happy. They just make me smile. And so we're gonna layer those cute little pearlescent vellum wings on the back of each bee. You could also use some white cardstock and add a little detail with a blue marker and I think that would look pretty too. Now I started to think that those green leaves looked a little bit plain after we added so much marker detail to everything else. So I'm just taking a dark green and a light green marker and doing that same technique. Just kind of scribbling on a little bit of green, blending it out with the light. And now you can see all of these cute elements. And I love how quick and easy it is to do with the markers. And actually, like I said, the messier it looks, kind of the better. It just looks so pretty on a card. And so here with our branch, I die cut it out of some wood grain cardstock and did the same thing with a dark brown and a light brown marker. Then here I'm going to take a white gel pen and just add some cute little details. I'm going to add little lines and dots around the curved edges of the bee and little dots in the rosy cheeks and then add some curves onto those leaves and also onto the beehive too. And I just love the look of these white lines. It just makes it feel so special and it makes everything feel kind of 3D. I'm also adding some white gel pen lines to the branch as well. Next, we're going to work on the background, and for that, we're going to use the Magic Iris add-on here. So we're going to be die cutting that out of some white cardstock, and then we're going to be doing some inking. And then we're eventually going to layer our beehive over top of this Magic Iris add-on. Now, I was inspired by Grace to create this beautiful background, and then all of that cute hive was inspired by Tammy. And I love being inspired by my beautiful crafty friends, because they come up with the most beautiful ideas. And this sky that Grace created, oh my goodness, it has guava ballet slippers and butter and it creates this beautiful kind of magical sunset sky. So you'll see I did some guava, some of the lighter pink, the ballet slippers, and then the butter and I'm taking the butter up really high into the ballet slippers because as they overlap it kind of becomes like an orange color. Now here I'm taking some clean water in a spray bottle and I'm spraying a lot of this water and then picking it up with my paper towel. And the more you spray this water on there, I feel like the more ethereal look that you get and the colors really blend well together when you spray the water on. 
Then I'm gonna take some Copic White, or you could use white acrylic paint. This is just what I happen to have. I'm taking a little bit of that, thinning it out with some water, and then picking it up with my paintbrush and just tapping the paintbrush to create little splatters all over the card. And there's something about the white splatters that I just always think is so pretty. And so I'm gonna take that whole thing and put it aside to dry while I start to create my magic iris. And if you've never made a magic iris before, make sure to check out the intro to magic iris video. We will link it in the description below. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut one of these rings, and then we're gonna take this piece, we like to call it the flux capacitor piece or the radioactive piece, and you're gonna line that up with the center of the open part of the ring, and then we're gonna run that through our die cut machine. And that's gonna give us this piece that has these three slots. Then we're gonna cut that same ring two more times. So you'll have two plain rings and one with those extra slots that have been die cut into it. Next, we're gonna die cut three of these pieces, which we like to call the sausage pieces because it kind of looks like sausage. So we're gonna die cut three of those. And then we're also gonna cut three of the stabilizer pieces, which is those pieces right there. And so the moving pieces there, those sausage pieces, we've cut out of some dark brown because we want the inside of the hive to kind of look dark brown as if it's kind of dark inside of it. And then we did the rings out of yellow since we die cut the hive out of those yellow. And you'll see as we put this together how that's gonna work together. So now we're gonna take these sausage pieces and we're gonna add them into the slots. And this is how you do that. You fit it right into the slot like that and then you'll see that the interior of that piece is gonna line up with that interior circle of the ring. So here you'll see how that works out. So we're gonna push those all the way into the slot and then there you can see how they're gonna line up. So you'll know you have them in per perfect placement when the interior part of those sausage pieces line up with the interior part of the ring. Now you'll notice that each of those little pieces has a little X on it. The die created a little X marks the spot. And you're gonna to wanna to take a mini glue dot. The, the size is important, so that mini size is the right size. And we're gonna line one glue dot up on each of those X's for a total of three glue dots. Once you have those glue dots on there, what we're going to be doing is taking another plain ring and adding it over top. But before you add it over top, you wanna to make sure that those pieces are in perfect placement. So once again, the interior part of those pieces are gonna line up with the interior part of that yellow ring. Now you can see those are lined up really nicely and we can now finally put that plain ring right on top. And when you add the ring on top, it's gonna to stick to those three glue dots. Once that part is done, you can take this whole thing and flip it over and you'll see on the back side that the die has created these little small little kind of rectangle pieces. That's gonna tell you where to put your adhesive. So you're gonna go on each of those and you're gonna take your tape runner and put a strip of adhesive from the inside part of the ring to the outside part of the ring. And so you'll have three different strips of adhesive. Then we're gonna take those stabilizer pieces and we're gonna attach those onto those strips of adhesive. And so you'll see that the end of the stabilizer piece has a curve and you can line up that curve with that interior ring, just like that. So we're gonna put one down and then we'll repeat it on the other ones. So we're gonna take the curve on the stabilizer piece and we're gonna line that up with that interior ring. Once that's done, we're gonna flip the whole thing over and we're gonna cut the tab piece next. And it's the piece that looks like this. And we're just gonna cut that out of some white cardstock. Then I'm gonna take the magic iris and make sure that one of those stabilizer pieces is pointed at me. I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back of that tab piece about halfway down, and then we're gonna line up this piece. And what we're gonna do is line up the curved edge with the inside part of the ring, and then you're gonna line it up against that little stabilizer piece, creating kind of like a skinny V, just like that. So you can kind of see this in slow motion there. We're creating a V shape between the two, and there you can see it all done. Now we're gonna take that last ring and you're just gonna plop it right on there, nice and loose, no adhesive or anything. And the only place we're gonna add adhesive is actually onto these stabilizer pieces. So we've got the ring inside there that's just been added on without any adhesive. Then we're gonna put adhesive on the stabilizer pieces and we're gonna wrap these stabilizer pieces around. And as you wrap it around, you want it to lightly hug. You don't want it to be too tight. And you'll know that you did it not too tight because you'll see that the stabilizer pieces actually don't make it all of the way to the inside of the ring. And that's exactly what you want. Then you can pull that tab. And as you pull the tab, you'll see the magic iris is working. And oh my goodness, I never get over making these. I think they are just so much fun. 
Now, that Magic Iris add-on that we added ink to earlier, it has a special little tab that goes along with it, that Magic Iris add-on right there. And so what I'm doing is actually just inking a piece to make sure that it's gonna match. I should have inked it at the time, but I just kind of forgot. So I'm gonna ink it up with the guava ink, I'm gonna spray some water on it, and I'm also gonna splatter some white splatters just so that everything coordinates nicely. And then we can go ahead and die cut it with the tab that's included with the Magic Iris add-on. And you'll see why we have this special tab in just a little bit. It's gonna help us line the whole thing up. So we're gonna die cut it out of that piece. And then now we'll be able to add it onto the Magic Iris mechanism. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of it. And then we're gonna line up that curved edge with the outside curved edge of the ring, just like that. Then you'll notice that there's a little bit of extra tab on there. And all we need to do is just take our scissors and trim that piece off. And now we'll have this custom shaped tab. And it'll have the white arrow there that's gonna tell the recipient what to do. They wanna to pull to have their cool magic iris reveal happen. And then this here is why we wanted to use that special tab. You'll see that it's gonna line up perfectly with that magic iris add-on that we inked and splattered earlier. So what we need to do now is add some adhesive to the top of the mechanism. So we're gonna add adhesive all over the yellow ring part, not in the center, because we want to make sure that that part moves. And then what you can do is I like to lay the magic iris mechanism down on my work surface and then I take the add-on and I just layer that over top and make sure that that little tab piece kind of fills in the rectangle. And once that fills in properly there and you have a nice straight line, you know it's in perfect placement and you can press down. And now you'll have a working magic iris right in the center of the magic iris add-on. Then we can bring back that Magic Iris Beehive add-on and layer that on top. And isn't that so pretty? I love the yellows and pinks together so much. Now we're gonna start working on the design. So we're gonna take all of the pieces that we colored and die cut earlier, and we're gonna start adding those on. So here you can see how beautiful that branch is gonna look over top of the beehive. And then we're gonna add all of these cute little leaves. And in this case, I'm adding two leaves to the end of the branches, and I think that looks so sweet too. Just adorable. And then we're just gonna keep layering everything on there and you'll see the whole thing coming to life. Now at this point, I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted my bees and flowers to go. So I thought, let me work on my card base. And I decided to cut the largest stitched rectangle out of some white cardstock, and I'm gonna layer that onto a white card base. And the reason for that is I thought the double layer of stitching just looked really pretty, and it kind of went along with the beehive for me for some reason. It added that little extra thing to it. So we're gonna go ahead and layer that onto the card base, and then we can layer our magic iris mechanism over top of that. So to do that, we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna add some foam squares along the top and the bottom, being careful to not get in the way of the moving mechanism. So I'm gonna add some big ones and then I'll use some little foam squares for the very top and the centers, just to make sure we don't have any adhesive in the way of our working mechanism. Then we can add some tape runner, but just to the top of those stabilizer pieces because we wanna make sure that we're not gonna get in the way of this moving mechanism. Then we can peel up the liner paper on the foam squares and then layer that on to the card base. And I love the pop of white around all of this beautiful inked background. I think it's just so pretty. Now, I wanted to make sure my mechanism was working, and as soon as I opened it, I realized, oh my goodness, I need a sentiment for the inside. So I went ahead and die cut that Magic Iris Beehive again out of some chocolate bar cardstock. And we're just gonna use the inside of that, and we're gonna do some white heat embossing with the more magic messages. So I'm gonna prep that with an anti-static powder tool, and then I'm gonna be stamping the You Are So Amazing in some clear embossing ink. Once we've stamped that onto the circle, we can sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and heat it up with a heat tool and we'll have this beautiful, nice, bright, white, shiny sentiment that's gonna be a surprise inside of the Magic Iris. And to add the sentiment inside, we just need to open up the Magic Iris, add some tape runner to the back of that Magic Messages piece there, and then you're just gonna fit that right inside of the hive. So I'm just gonna layer that in, and you'll see you kinda have to press down onto the card base to get through all of the layers of the Magic Iris. You'll see there I realized, oh, I didn't press it down enough. Pressed it down, and voila. Isn't that so cool? There's something about this that I just think is so beautiful. It's just so gorgeous. I love that sentiment just popping out from the inside. 
So now that I have the sentiment there, I felt like I could start adding my beads and flowers on because I kind of knew that I wanted the bee to overlap the sentiment some and I wanted to make sure it wasn't overlapping the words. So now that everything's all set up, I can finally do that. So I'm gonna start layering these cute little bees on and oh my goodness, it's just so sweet. And then we're gonna start layering some flowers. But before that, I thought it would be fun to take one of these just plain awesome sentiment trails and use it on the card. I love that they're super cute for the paper airplanes, but that you could use them with any flying object. So this cute little bee is gonna be perfect. And I thought the thank you went really nicely with the you are so amazing sentiment. Now I'm gonna start adding some flowers and leaves around the hive just to kind of make it more florally and pretty and kind of make it feel summery. So we're gonna start adding those all around. And then one of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to end up tucking a daisy behind where the magic iris pull tab is. This is a technique that Megan from the design team does a lot and I think it's so cute to have a little surprise behind the tab. And I had an extra daisy so I thought that would be just perfect to add it there. And now this card is all done and oh my goodness, the surprise when you pull the tab is just too much. Once again, this just makes me smile. I could just play with this all day. I think it's so sweet and so cute. And I love that you can use the beehive with the magic iris, which is just such a wow card. Or you can do something a little more simple like we did earlier in the video where you use the beehive on its own. And oh my goodness, I just love this so much. Oh. And now what Shari is gonna show you is how to use the more magic messages on its own without the magic iris or a magic iris add-on. So take it away, Shari. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my background and I have the dotted moon and stars backdrop in portrait. And I have just cut that from some Bristol cardstock. And then I'm going to be doing some inking. So I have Distress Oxide, Wilted Violet, and Villainous Potion. I'm starting out with the Wilted Violet and I'm just doing a layer of this all over this piece of Bristol. I've not even popped out all the little stars and moons yet. I will do that when I'm finished inking. And then I'm pulling in the Villainous Potion and doing that darker purple around the edges. So I'm just working my way around all four sides and the corners, pulling that darker purple in from the edges. And then I thought it needed just a little bit more darkness, so I'm pulling out my Distressed Oxide and Black Soot, and I'm just gonna go very lightly right on the edge of the cardstock. So you can see it's just kind of giving me that defined black line on the outside edge. Now I wanted to add some shimmer to this background, so I'm going to pull out my metallic watercolors and I'm using the white metallic watercolor to just add some splatters all over the background. So I'm going to have some glitter showing through those openings and then I'll have this metallic splatter on the front. So here is that background which I'll set aside to finish drying and then I'm going to work my sentiment. So I'm using a sentiment from the new More Magic Messages. This one says dream big which I just think is so cute. I love the little design around this one. And I have stamped this in some black ink onto some ballet slipper cardstock and I'm using some clear embossing powder to heat emboss the sentiment. Then I'll just use the coordinating die to cut this out. And then I like all these open areas on this particular stamp and I'm going to color them in. I'm starting with the cloud. I'm using my white gel pen for the cloud to color that in white. And then I've pulled out my color pencils for some of the other images. So I'm coloring a little yellow moon and stars. And then I've pulled out a purple to color in that word big since it has those nice open letters. And then I have a blue here and I'm actually just tracing along the edge of the kind of the cloud shapes as well as the word dream. And since I heat embossed this, it's really easy to kind of run that pencil along the edge of those lines. Now I have a piece of silver glitter cardstock and I've just put some liquid glue all over the back of my panel and I'm just going to layer that behind and then I'm going to add this to a card base. So now I have those glittery silver moons and stars as well as that shimmery splatter that I added. Now I've put some foam squares onto the back of my sentiment here and I'm just going to center that up in the card. And then I've cut some of the stitch clouds from the spring showers die set. I've cut some from fog as well as some mermaid clouds to kind of 
change it up and have some different colored clouds and create this whimsical nighttime scene. Now I am gluing the clouds in the back directly to the card base and then I use some thin foam squares for the clouds that layer over top. And then for my mice, I'm using some regular thickness foam squares and so they're popped up even more. So I have a lot of dimension on this card. And I'm just working my way around gluing my clouds down where I had placed them earlier. So again, that one in the background is glued to the backdrop and then this one's on some thin foam squares. For this one, since I only have one cloud in this little cluster, I am going to use the thin foam squares for it. And then that way my mouse can be on the regular thickness foam squares and be popped up just a bit more than the cloud. So one trick is to use the thin foam square where that mouse overlaps the cloud and then use the regular thickness where it's going to touch the background. And then of course I have this moon cut from some sunflower cardstock. This one I used the die from the forest backdrop uh, die set, but I think there are a couple other moons that you could use as well. And then I'll just trim off the edge of those two clouds that overhang. I did not trim off the edge of those little tails that overhang the edge because I think that's kind of fun that they do that. And then I'm adding some glitter to some of the areas of my sentiment. I glittered the letters and the little moon. And then I'm also adding a line of glitter along the top of those clouds. And then I probably could have left it just like this, but I pulled out my little hearts cut from guava cardstock and laid a few of those on there. And I really liked the little pops of pink that it added. So I'm just adding a few of those little hearts. And then here is my finished card with that whimsical nighttime scene and those cute little mice flying around. And I think that it goes perfectly with this new Magic Messages stamp. This card is so sweet, Shari. I love how beautiful and sparkly it is. And next up, we're going to show you some incredible cards by the design team. And first up, we have this slimline card by Grace that is just stunning. I love that she used the more magic messages and the beehive together on a slimline card. I think that is so fun and so gorgeous. And then next up, we have a really fun card by Elise. And Elise used the magic messages, but without the magic iris. And I think this is so pretty with those paper pieced paper airplanes. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. Next up, we have a stunning card by Tammy. I love that beautiful turquoise background that she ink blended and how she combined the buzz and buy to say sentiment over top with the you are so amazing. This card by Audrey is so pretty and I love the splatters that she added to the beehive for texture. I love how Mindy added that beautiful sending rainbows and sunshine sentiment into the sunburst backdrop with those cute just plain awesome mice. I just love this card. Elena shows us that the wet sewing on floral papers are the perfect background to these cute little bees and beehive. Oh, I love these colors together so much. And then here, Megan made an incredible magic iris. I just love the flowers that she added over top. And then as you open it up, you have the just a little note and she added the bee over the little paper airplane in that message too. And I think that's so sweet. This card by Maureen is so much fun. I love the unicorns from Unicorn Picnic and it's so magical. And when you open it up, she's heat embossed the dream big in silver embossing powder. And I think that's just stunning. This card is also by Maureen and she did another beautiful magic iris. Oh, I love these both so much, Maureen. And when you open that magic iris up, what she did was stamp a sentiment from the high five stamp set in there. And I think that's a really cool way to add your message to the center. This card by Callie is so beautiful and I love the honeycomb stenciling that she added behind the beehive. That's such a great addition. Melissa brought back the magic spring messages and added them in to this awesome beehive. I love that you can use any of the magic messages sets with it. And then this card by Lynette is so pretty and she used our brand new honeycomb backdrop in the background and I just love it. Mindy stenciled the most beautiful background for the beehive. Oh my goodness, I love that rainbow background and how she added the high five bees onto the beehive. And then this card by Leticia is so sweet and I love how she used the, all the dots paper in the background. It's a perfect addition. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with the beehive and with the more magic messages. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.